Hey there, this is just a class example um, going over, you know, kind of like the last equilibrium type of problem we have to deal with. And what, you know, take a pause and read this if you haven't already. And I probably have given you a PDF of this. Um, but if you haven't read it, pause it and read it. And so I'm going to describe it now. So you've got, you know, vertical wall here and a cable attached and a cable goes to the end of this darker beam here. And this is like a beam that has weight. And that beam can pivot on this hinge here that's, you know, mounted to this other vertical wall. And we, you know, I'm giving you some angle information here. And that's part of the issue is just dealing with the angles. And so it's an equilibrium, main idea of these types of problems, and we want to find the pull of the cable, otherwise known as the tension. And then what we do with hinge forces is we typically would break it into horizontal and vertical components rather than look at the overall force of the hinge. So there's really four things that are involved here. One of them is this unknown pull of the cable that we're going to just call T for tension. And we have the weight of this beam, which would act in the middle of the beam. Um, an apparent challenge is the beam length wasn't given to us. Okay, so I'm just labeling that, and that I tried to aim for the middle. And then, like I said, the hinge is probably pulling to the right and also helping hold up the weight, right? So rather than, you know, write an overall thing at some unknown angle, which that's the thing that's tricky about hinge forces, is they don't go along the line of the beam. Uh, they could, but they don't necessarily go along that line. So we, we break it into components. So Fy will be the vertical component of that hinge force. And the reason I said it was up is because it has to contend with part of the weight. This single upward component of the tension isn't enough, probably. So more than likely, it's upward. And then the force of the hinge is also going to keep it from pulling away. Since this cable is pulling the beam to the left, we need some force to the right to balance it, so that'll be our fx. Okay, and um, uh, the other thing is if you ever do a problem and you're unsure of the direction of the arrow, then just pick a direction and stick with it when you build your equations, and if it doesn't come out positive, in other words it comes out negative, that means you guessed wrong, and that, that, so it's, that shouldn't stop you from proceeding. So um, on the PDF, I probably gave you this, and let me actually just, you know, I've got this sort of pre-baked so it goes faster for you on the video. So to do the tension force, I'm just going to redraw that T there. Um, if we're going to do that for part A, it makes sense to treat the hinge as the origin, and then those two forces that, that I sketched on the previous page here, their torque won't contribute. In other words, you know, torque is R cross F, and so if we choose the origin as that spot there, both Fx and Fy will have R is equal to zero, and there will be no torque provided. And so I find that, you know, you as the student, you're the one trying to learn how to do this problem. You drawing the the arrows helps because it really becomes a diagrammatic solution. So try to pause and do that so that you're building this as we go. Um, there's really only one more hurdle as compared to like the ladder type problems that we've recently done. So we're using the torque equation, right? Torque equals I alpha, but because this is an equilibrium, alpha is zero, so torque net equals zero. And we only have the two torques, one from the tension force, which I forgot to label. So, you know, the tension is providing a, like, think about it, here's the origin. So the tension is going to tend to make this thing spin this way, while the weight um, is going the other way. So the weight's force is this way, which would make a counterclockwise rotation. So those are in balance. It's an equilibrium. They're in balance. Um, so what we have to do is, um, and the way we've been dealing with torque uh, primarily is rather than do the R cross F, you know, sort of the, the the grassroots cross product is we look at the force and then find the R perpendicular. So we have to find, and this will be the really the main hurdle of this problem, is find these two different R perpendiculars. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about next, okay? So, um, so let's see, I just revealed it there. I didn't. If there's not too much drama with this, um, so let's talk about the the R perpendicular for the 500. I want to explain where this comes from. So it's not just like here it is, boys and girls. You're stuck fig figuring it out. No. And so um, here's this force, right? The the red 500 newton arrow down. Here's the point of reference. Now if, watch my pen. The, my pen goes from the origin to where the force is applied. That's the R vector. The R perpendicular is the 
part of that r vector that's perpendicular to the direction of the force. And so what I'm going to do is just grab my little line tool and I'm going to put a dashed line that's parallel to the 500 Newton force. See how it goes through like that? And then right here, watch my cursor, it goes from here to there. The shortest distance will be a perpendicular line back. And notice that doesn't change. We This should, I'm hoping, feel familiar because we talked about this with angular momentum and how when something's going in a straight line, it's our perpendicular doesn't change as it goes in a straight line from the point of reference and the angular momentum stays the same, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, because of our diagram here, if I draw another line this way, we're going to suddenly see, I'm going to outline it in blue for some color interest, a triangle here. It's a right triangle. And we have this 40 degree angle there. And then now, you know, you see that we don't have the length. There's, they didn't tell us it was two meters or whatever. So we leave that L as a variable. And you'll see it's going to cancel out. But from the middle where the weight acts to the edge, that's not L. It's L over 2. So the hypotenuse is L over 2. So now it might be a little bit more apparent. We're actually solving for this little side where I put the double lines. And uh, that's why we use sine, because it's opposite. So that's, that expression there represents the R perpendicular for the 500 Newton weight of the beam. OK? So now we're going to talk about the R perpendicular for the cable force. This expression, where did it come from? And what we have to do is. Um, similar thing here. I'm going to see, is that loose so I can grab it? I can. So I'm just going to grab that dashed line and stretch it out. And that extends the line of action of the force. And again, what we're trying to do is recognize, and there's now my drawing's got a lot of stuff on it, so it's a little harder to understand. But here's the origin where the cursor is. And now I'm tracing the R vector for the tension force. So it's really the, the beam line. And so um, I want to draw back a perpendicular line to that. So I'm going to grab my line tool again, and let's just make it a fun color. Let's make it, let's leave it solid, and uh, maybe orange. I don't use orange enough. Well, speaking of which, there it is. Oh, wait. You know, smart board's smart, but Mr. Britton's not smart. I wanted a solid line. <laughs> I'm still messing with that same line because I've got it selected. All right, well, that's orange now. I want a new line, and let's just make it a dashed. I'm changing changing things in green dashed line here. All right, sorry. Everything's... And so I'm trying to draw it so it's perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So this dashed line I just added, that is the visualization of the R perpendicular for the cable force. And so we have to do a little bit of geometry here. Uh, we have a supplement situation, right? That's 100. So this should be 80 in here. So this angle should be 80 degrees, 80 degrees. Um, and so now you can maybe start to see where this is. So we have another right triangle here. The hypotenuse is the whole length, the whole L. So we take the hypotenuse times sine of that big angle, and that'll tell us the R perpendicular for that. So there's our torque equation, and it has an L in it. And we, we don't know the T, but because both terms have an L, I can divide both sides by L. And that's OK, because I know L isn't 0. And that will cancel out the L. So that gets canceled out, interestingly, that it doesn't matter. Um, and so now we just have math to do. You want to make sure you're in degree mode when you're doing these with degrees. And it ends up, you know, that shouldn't be shocking. That sine of 80 ends up pretty big, because uh, it's, it's a big angle in relation to 90. So our tension comes out to about 163 newtons. And that's part A, which is the hardest part of this and why I tried to kind of go slow so that you could think while I was talking. Uh, just going back to the question, so now we want to find the horizontal and vertical components uh, on the hinge, so we have to go back and find these. So what we typically do is we don't reboot and say, well, let's choose this point to sum the torques about. And that actually would not make life that easy because both of these would be providing torques. So it's going to be better if we use our simpler F net equals MA. Acceleration is zero, so F net equals zero. And we can take F net and break it into F net X and F net Y. So we actually get two separate things we can do. So let's see, I think I've got that pre-baked here. Yes, pretty sloppy. F net X equals zero. That's an X there. Um, and uh, there's two things that are acting in the horizontal direction. Right? There's this guy. And no, not you. Yes, you partially. So I have to do a little component thinking with this. So this blue arrow I'm adding is the part of the tension that's horizontally to the left there. 
and then I have to actually you know do some more angle work to I need to find this angle in here and so I've got 100 degrees there I'm gonna draw this blue line back all the way and you see there's this big right triangle there so there's 40 90 so that means that this I'm gonna just move my 80 because it's kind of obtrusive so it's a complementary angle right so this will be 50 degrees in there which means that this is 30 that makes sense that's 30 right so everything sort of makes sense you know unless you don't like angle stuff from geometry that's 30 degrees in there so to find TX this adjacent right Sokotoa the adjacent side I'm gonna take the tension that we found times cosine of 30 and so you know I, that's the next step there um, at any point I could have put in this 163 there which I'll I'll do um, and I did the math already so that comes out to 141 okay and then lastly for the vertical component of the force uh, let's go back up to the diagram we have a little bit more going on vertically the tension also pulls up with a vertical component so I'm just going to show that floating out here in this right triangle so that'll be TY and we're going to use sine of 30 times the 163 for that the 163 again was the tension uh, we have the downward weight and then we have an upward FY that we're trying to find right so it's going to be FY plus TY minus 500 equals 0 let's see how it sort of built out there so F net Y equals 0 and so we have two upward forces components but forces and then the downward weight they have to add up to 0 and so we're, FY is what we're solving for there's my tension force that we found earlier here's the sine 30 I mentioned for the vertical component and you just do the math this part's a little easier okay so thanks for watching sorry you missed it in class um, and have a nice uh, time uh, you know, getting good at equilibrium take care